So you finally landed on the moon, colonized Duna, explored the jewel system, and maybe permanently relocated Jeb to Eve, and you're looking for some new stuff to try in Kerbal Space Program. Introducing Kerbal Space Program 2. Okay, so they fired everybody and released the game unfinished with less features than the original for twice the price. So that's probably not going to work for now. The future of Kerbal Space Program is very much in the air right now with some developers like Rocketworks working on their own successor to KSB2 with a working title called Kitten Space Agency. Also in the same week, the KSB2 IP got sold off to a mystery buyer. Uh, with all this uncertainty about the future of Kerbal Space Program, you can make your own Kerbal Space Program too with mods. Okay, so there's basically four types of mods I'll be covering, and I want to give you guys a roadmap from what I have learned modding my Kerbal Space Program experience, so that you guys can try it for yourselves and keep your progression going in the OG game. First off, how do you install mods? There's a great nifty mod called CCAN, which is basically a huge network that auto-installs mods for you. Just scroll and search the database and check the ones that you want and hit install, and it basically just does the whole thing for you. I will link to a great video on how to get CCAN set up, but some mods aren't on CCAN for whatever reason, so the way that you install mods manually is to download them from the KSP mod forum page, Space Doc, or GitHub, or whatever, and drop the mod folder into your game data folder in your KSP files, as you can see right here. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, I want to get into the juicy stuff, visual mods. You can get your KSP1 game to look as good, if not better, than KSP2, thanks to the work of some genius community developers. This is a list that I think you all should download outright. Just feel free to screenshot this. The big ones are Environmental Visual Enhancements Redux, Parallax, Scatterer, and True Volumetric Clouds, which cost $5 on the Creator Patreon, but it's worth it. Um, this is what your KSP looked like before, and this is what it looks like after these awesome visual mods. Parallax adds really great ground scatter, like trees, grass, rocks, and more, and it gives a great character and life to all the locations in the game. And so this is true volumetric clouds. Instead of the 2D one-layer clouds, this mod turns clouds into full-blown 3D simulations with weather and more, even on the gas giants, like Jewel, which is insane. Okay, so after all those mods, here's some extras you guys might be interested in. Restock and Z theme. Restock basically reskins the stock parts in the game to look a little bit more realistic and consistent. A lot of people love it, but it actually does slightly alter the drag profiles of some of these parts, so I haven't tried it for that reason, but it looks great. Z theme changes the UI of the game into a dark theme like uh, KSB2 had. This looks more modern and stands out less against the backdrop of space, so that's pretty cool. After you've visited all the locations in the Kerbal system, you might want to expand your horizons. We're going to complete the Kerbal system. So you've probably caught on to that the Kerbal system is roughly related to ours. Kerbal is Earth, Duna is Mars, Jewel is Jupiter, and so on. Well, where are Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune? Introducing the Outer Planets mod. This mod is essential in my opinion and fills the gaps in the Kerbal system, adding Kerbal analogs to the rest of the gas giants in the outer solar system. Let's take a look. This is Sarnus, the Saturn analog in the Outer Planets mod. It has a bunch of really interesting moons. This is Erlum, which is the Uranus analog in the Outer Planets mod. It has a really cool ring system and some moons as well. This is Naden, which is the Neptune analog in the Outer Planets mod. It's really cool. It's purple, most notably. Um, and this is Plock, which is the new Pluto analog in the Outer Planets mod. So we've replaced Elu as the uh, Pluto analog. Now Elu is an Enceladus analog in the orbit of Sarnus. Tecto is a really cool moon. It's an analog of Titan. It has a really thick atmosphere. Um, pretty cool. Thatmo is a Triton analog, which is a moon of Neptune in real life. It's really cool. Got a thin atmosphere. It's like an ice moon. This is Wall, which uh, I actually don't know what it's an analog of, but it looks like a walnut. Um, this guy orbits Erlum, and it's really interesting because it's a moon that has another small moon. This is Slate, a large deserty moon of Sarnus. It's really big, so it's a great uh, opportunity for a gravity assist. Ovok is kind of like this moon near the rings of Sarnus. It looks kind of like an egg, but yeah, OPM, really cool. It's compatible with basically all your visual mods, um, including true volumetric clouds. It's really awesome. On top of Outer Planets mod, there's another planet pack that continues to complete the Kerbal system with analogs of lesser known minor planets or objects in our solar system. This is including comets, other dwarf planets, and trans-Neptunian objects. This is the Minor Planets expansion, and it was made to go alongside Outer Planets mod, so let's take a look. So one of the bodies it adds is 433 Edis, which is an Eros analog. Also Vant, which is a Vesta analog. Zor, which is a Psyche analog. 
68P Lint Mikey, which is a 67P analog. Croxlev, which is a Chericlo analog. 1P Gaito, which is a Halley's Comet analog, pretty cool. Havis, which is a Haumea analog with a really cool ring system here in an oblate shape. Maraxis, which is a Make Make analog. Ervo, which is an Eris analog. This thing has its own little atmosphere and lakes of liquid oxygen. Soden, which is a Sedna analog. This guy flies out way out to the outskirts of the Kerbal system. But yeah, like this is the map with all of these planets from Outer Planets mod and Minor Planets mod installed, adding thousands more hours to your KSB experience. After all that, there is a really great planet mod also that adds even more planets to the Kerbal system, all super close to the sun and within the orbit of Moho, the Mercury analog. This is the Quack Pack mod. Although these planets don't have real solar system counterparts, they are based off real exoplanets observed in other solar systems, and they present a really interesting challenge with the high delta V requirements and extreme environments involved. This is Blass, the first planet in the Quack Pack within the orbit of Moho. It's a desert planet with a really cool ring system here and a moon as well. This is Jot, a hot gas giant, kind of like a blue jewel, if you will, um, just within the orbit of Blass, closer to the sun. It's got its own little small moon here, but it's really cool. And then we have Sind, which is a molten planet. This thing's like covered in lava, basically melting at this point, super close to the sun, really crazy destination for you guys to challenge yourselves to reach. So the Quack Pack mod is a bonus. I don't usually play with it usually, but with Outer Planets mod, Minor Planets expansion, and the Quack Pack installed, you've more than doubled the places to visit in the Kerbal system and added thousands of hours of fun and exploration to your KSP experience. Now that we're gonna be spending a lot more time in space, we might as well get comfy. The Stock Alike Station Parts Expansion Redux mod adds dedicated space station parts to the game that are great quality and have awesome interiors. Most notably, it comes with awesome deployable centrifuges for artificial gravity for your Kerbals. Here's a space station Matt Lown built recently trying out this mod. These parts have really great and detailed interiors. In addition to free IVA, which allows you to move freely in the interior of these mods, it creates an awesome and more immersive experience. I'm gonna be covering free IVA later, just so you guys know. Okay, so we've got orbital living covered. What about surface bases? This is Kerbal Planetary Base Systems, one of two surface base part mods I have tried and the most stock alike of the two. Here is some footage from a video of mine trying out these parts in a base that I built. It has really great interiors and uh, pretty cozy. The other base part mod I've tried is Planet Side Exploration Technologies. I did another video trying this one out as well, and I really love the details this mod gives to the parts. They're a bit more realistic looking than the planetary base system ones, but they're also a great choice. It also comes with its own rover parts to go with the base, and it's really awesome too. I'd recommend trying them out and seeing which ones you guys like better. Okay, this brings us to some helpful features, fixes, and tools you can get from some extra mods. Here's a brief list of some good ones. The stars are next to the ones that I've tried so far. Um, I mentioned free IVA before during the space station parts section, and this one basically lets you move freely within all parts in the game in first person view. It works with all the capsules as well as the station parts and surface based part mods I've shown already. I highly recommend it. Next we have Better Time Warp Continued. So some of these destinations in Outer Planets mod and Minor Planets expansion are really far out there. And this mod allows time warp to go faster than in the stock game so we don't have to wait as long to reach our destinations. It's an essential tool for far out um, spots. Now we have Kerbal Engineer, which gives us a more detailed readout of the specs of our craft in the VAB, including better Delta V readouts and other data that's helpful. Next we have the Trajectories mod. This one gives you a readout in the map and flight views where your craft is predicted to land or hit the ground. It's really helpful for planning your descent through atmospheres and landing on specific sites more precisely. We also have Transfer Window Planner, which gives you some tools to better plan out your transfer windows more efficiently. Pretty self-explanatory there. Here's the Community Tech Tree mod, which has integrated a ton of the part mods I have shown earlier into a tech tree progression for science or career modes to unlock these parts in a progression. You probably won't have every mod installed in the tree though, so you should also get the hide empty tech tree nodes mod to work around that. And lastly, for today, we have Chatterer, which adds some nice background radio chatter, spacecraft noises, and beeps to add some more atmosphere to the game. 
it makes floating in space for decades a little less lonely. And that's going to be about it for today, guys. This is just going to be part one of a part two episode. And the next one, I'll be covering near future technologies, going interstellar with the cacao below system, far future technologies, and even more extra star systems to explore. So stay tuned for the next one. Hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to see more modded KSP content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.